Yo, YouTube. I just felt stupid. Yo, YouTube. Um, my name's Josh. I'm from the UK. And we're going to do some supercars and sites. I've been wanting to start this YouTube channel for a long, long time now, but I've spent the last sort of four or five years trying to build my product business, um, uh, which is now a multi million dollar, or yeah, multi million pound dollar uh, business. And I'm going to start another YouTube channel, I think, to tell you all about that as well and hopefully inspire you to, to get to the same position. Um, but now I'd like to spend a little bit of time uh, making some videos. So the, the plan is to just kind of tour around the world, rent some really nice cars, get into the detail, get really geeky. I'm a, I'm a massive geek, so we're going to get into the real sort of technicalities of cars and upcoming cars. And then I want to combine it with doing some travel. So. I want to go see some sites, uh, see some uh, like tourist attractions, video it all, document it all, do the research so you don't have to. And hopefully it will inspire you to go see these places and do a similar sort of thing. So yeah, so at the moment I'm in Las Vegas, I got here last night and we're going to go down to one of the local shops to, to get a car. I'm thinking Lambo, not really sure, see what they've got. Aston Martin could be quite nice, but who knows. Um, and then I want to go to that big hole in the ground, what's it called? Uh, the Great Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon. So we're going to go there and see what it's like. Weather's looking a little bit muggy, but hopefully tomorrow it's going to be really sunny. So yeah, guys, I hope you really enjoy this and uh, obviously give me some feedback. I want to improve, improve the channel as much as possible. I'm new to all this, um, but hopefully we're going to have some fun. And uh, yeah, see you in the car. You ever needed a warning of what can happen to uh, you in these cars? Take note, people. Take note. So it's 7 a.m., people, and the day of reckoning has come. We're going to uh, take out the Batmobile. Um, Robin's not around anymore because the Batmobile killed him. It's a fucking death machine. It's capital punishment in a very pretty cage, basically. Uh, this twin turbo V10 Lambo uh, Huracan, something else. The, the 610 Dash 4, or the LP610 Dash 4 uh, model with a modified V10. Uh, just fucking bunged a twin turbo kit on. I think it's from Underground Racing, I need to check that, um, here in the States. But it's madness, it's pure madness. Picked it up last night, had a little bit of a drive, got used to it. Um, not too big a fan of driving uh, fast cars when it's pitch black, as you can imagine. Especially as this thing looks like midnight. Um, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like the, uh, um, How's it called? Boring. So, here we are. I don't know if you've noticed. You can probably hear the sound uh, of the V10 twin turbo behind me. Um, our pickup truck just opened up. That's embarrassing. Um, but yeah, we're here on a beautiful morning in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're on the way to the Grand Canyon Skywalk uh, in the Batmobile. And just had a little play around this morning. I drove it last night, but it was a little bit scary in the dark. Uh, so now we can see what we're doing and people can see us. We can uh, have a little play. to put it so you never have to take your hands off the wheel but one you can't hear them 
so you don't know if they're on or off and you know you're trying to focus on the road and not looking if your indicators are on or off um, and they're just really hard to press the Ferrari was much better but yeah I don't know they missed the trick there really um, but let's be honest you're not going to use them anyway the only way the only way to drive these cars uh, without crashing into anyone because of all the blind spots you just got to go faster than everyone <laughs> yeah, I got some beautiful scenery here. I hope the other camera's catching this. Let's move. They've tried to keep everything on the steering wheel. Which is good, but the buttons are just a little bit shitty, if I'm honest. Uh, the Ferrari was much nicer. But yeah, you've got a centre console that looks like you're in, a, you're in a jet fighter. Everything's orientated towards the driver, uh, like the Ferrari. Um, oh man, I need to get this scenery. Good. Yeah, this is the masterpiece of Filippo Perini. It first came out in. Uh, 2014. They've upgraded, uh, they've iterated the design a few times. Um, this one is the uh, LP610-4, uh, which is basically 610 brake horsepower and four-wheel drive. They do like a dash two as well. And yeah, I've got to say, as a, as a daily driver, it's it's not too bad actually. Um, with the turbo kit, it makes it a little bit sketchy especially that round corners because I think the torque just really goes through the roof when you're on that, you know, the, the peak power band. So it's kind of very misleading. But yeah, in corners it feels a little bit twitchy. The Ferrari felt much smoother. But it's got this adaptive electronic steering and pretty cool because around town it really lightens uh, the steering up, it becomes very very light and then the faster you go it seems to stiffen up, so it's pretty smart. It's got three uh, accelerometers and three gyroscopes in the car so it's constantly changing all the parameters, uh, the suspension, the steering, the engine, very smart, very smart. It's, it's a proper race car in that sense. Um, but yeah, it does, it does feel a little bit twitchy. I don't know if the guys have done it in suspension, but I doubt it because it's got this, uh, it's meant to have this electromagnetic suspension. Uh, they call it something mag magnetorological, magnetorological suspension, something like that. But basically it uses an electric field uh, to change the viscosity of the fluid in the damper. Super smart, very cool. The acceleration compared to the Ferrari is very different actually. The, the lag is minimal. Like you put your foot down in auto and you're gone. Like the Ferrari is a little little bit of a lag and I've just come from driving the Tesla V100 so that's just instant torque. So that Ferrari is a little bit, you go for a gap and then you, you miss it and then being calm. Um But this one, if you take a look, if you can hear it, but it's just, I'm going to put my foot down, three, two, one. Instant. Fucking madness. <laughs> but yeah, it's super instant. The dual, I think the Ferrari's only got a single clutch gearbox. It's got a dual clutch gearbox. What? Box. So maybe that's the difference. Well, you should look into dual, dual clutch gearbox technology, it's quite interesting. Got two pads that basically simultaneously change. Another interesting fact is when I picked up the car, I said I presume it takes 98 octane. And the Renault guy was like, Yeah, we only have 91 in America. I was like, So, while doing my fact checking, doing the editing of this video, uh, ignore all of that bullshit, uh, which it now definitely is. So I looked this up and 
fuel ratings are just different in the US versus Europe. So in Europe, a 95 Ron is a 91 Pom, um, which is a, basically an average between Ron and Mon, which are two different testing standards for fuel. So there you go. Sounds good. As standard, the Huracan does 0 to 60 in a astonishingly quick 2.5 seconds, presuming if you use launch control, etc. Um, but with the twin turbo kit, the guys reckon it'll do it in 2.2. Um, so pretty much just rips your face off. If you ever can get an opportunity to rent a Tesla and I'll, I'll do another video about that, uh, some really good guys in, in England uh, uh, on the east coast, southeast coast that do a really good deal. Um, it's a very very interesting comparison with that instant torque versus um, this where you know the delay is minute but it definitely makes a difference. But you lose all that emotion. That's the thing. In, the Tesla is like a child could drive it. You know, there's no skill required at all with the all-wheel drive system. You know, this has got all-wheel drive as well. Um, but that Tesla is seriously smart with its electric motors and stuff. Anyway, enough about the fucking Tesla. <laughs> Shuffing Lamborghini. Let's talk more about that. Welcome to Arizona and the Grand Canyon. This is one of the roads towards the Grand Canyon. It's only about 10 minutes away, if you're driving this anyway. Uh, but it's a proper spectacular road, proper mountain road through valleys, curves and twists, good long straights. Um, I got up to like, probably like 80 on a straight here. Fastest I've ever been, fucking shit my pants. Um, but what a view guys, what a view. And this, this machine, it's absolutely solid. It's a little bit twitchy around the bends that I really don't know my limits at all. Uh, it's quite it's quite scary. Um, but the brakes are the brakes are well up to temperature by now. Um, I did a sharp sharp corner and the uh, the phone just flew straight off the dashboard and hit the window. Um, luckily, it's all right. But um, yeah, guys absolutely mental what a place I'm the only person for miles hope the car starts so apparently what you do when you get to the uh, Grand Canyon uh, you've got to park up and there's this white pavilion and then uh, you get a bus, they take you up in a bus. It's just a bit of a shame really, I thought we'd be able to drive all the way there. Maybe there's another way, I'll try and find another way on the way back. Um, but it seems there's only one road there and you've got to do it their way. What a shame. So you can, uh, you can get helicopter rides up over the Grand Canyon and see how much that is. Uh, kind of scares me a little bit there. Seems to be a lot of helicopters though, it's like five or six. I could not think of a better way to get from the debaucherous, hectic Sin City of Las Vegas to the tranquil Arizona desert and the Grand Canyon. But if I was to do it again, would I take the hurricane? For now, I don't think I can answer that question until I have driven some more of the competition. 
This particular hurricane, as we know, has mutated into some ferocious, untamable animal, and so I don't think I can give it a fair review. The twin turbo modification is a lovely piece of kit and definitely adds to the excitement, and I can't wait to drive the naturally aspirated original so I can compare my experience. I have been really impressed with how drivable this car. The intelligence in the engineering is a marvel to behold. The optional dynamic active suspension that can just adjust in milliseconds due to its magnetological fluid and the traction control system that does a pretty good job of keeping your investment safe. Oh, don't forget the curb avoidance system. I may have just made that up. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this and you definitely need to take a trip to the Grand Canyon. It's a sight to behold. And if you can, definitely take a good car, some good roads on the way. <laughs>